Hey, good evening. It's Monday, June 10th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. I can't think of a more peaceful, beautiful scene than what's behind me to begin this week with the late sun, almost sunset, the beautiful clouds, the cows just peacefully grazing out there in the pasture. Wow. Praise God for his faithfulness in providing something like this. I'm enjoying it at least. Tonight, we're going to look at what it means to plant seeds of peace. See, there's a reason Jesus began these rays of light, these foundational building blocks, to introduce the practical implications, the impact of the new covenant to his people. As he sits there on this mountainside, sitting with them, talking with them in the beauty of nature, he describes this amazingly wonderful, beautiful way of life. And he begins with what we call the Beatitudes, what I'm calling these seven rays of light. But it requires a radical transformation inside. So Jesus begins with, blessed are the poor in spirit. And that doesn't mean that you're weak. It means that you're putting your own spirit aside to live for the things of God, not putting yourself first. The seventh ray of light, planting seeds of peace, that is, being a peacemaker, that requires poor in spirit as an essential element to that. We can't make peace with others unless we are poor in our spirit and rich in God's spirit. Peacemaking is hard, challenging, rewarding work, but it's challenging. The angels told us the good news about Jesus. And they were excited, and they told the shepherds this. And then once they proclaimed Jesus, the Prince of Peace, coming to them, then they say this in, in Luke 2.14, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. See, peace isn't for everyone. Because apart from knowing God, we can't really know peace. So if we want to follow Christ and be in the peacemaking business, we need to be concerned about being poor in spirit and giving ourselves to what he gave us for, taking that clue from him. What is this good news? The image that's coming up on your screen right now is someone who is planting seeds of peace. You see it being laid out in the, in the ground, in the beautiful thing there, and then you see little plants coming up as a result of these seeds. And this reminds us of what James is talking about when he, after he gets just through describing wisdom from above, then right after that, he says, and those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest, harvest of righteousness. This is James 3.18. Those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. See, the wisdom from below, just before the wisdom from above, the wisdom from below talks about envy, strife, discord, upset, anger, disunity. But the wisdom from above brings peace, and we do that by planting seeds of peace. Listen carefully here. Peace is making a commitment to plant peace, mature, nurture peace, until there is lasting peace. Peace is a commitment to plant peace, nurture peace, and then nurture it until there is lasting peace. Making peace is not a quick fix, but a timeless commitment to see the Spirit's fruit ripen in people's hearts. Making peace is not a quick fix, but a timeless commitment to see the Spirit's fruit ripen in people's hearts. So Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God, because they're doing the work of the Son of God. There are times, as I mentioned earlier, we're doing peace is anything but peaceful, because in our own natural way, we don't want peace. We want to be rich in spirit. We want what we want. 
That's why we have to be poor in space, poor, poor in spirit, and rich in God's spirit. Planting seeds of peace means patiently caring, watering, weeding, and nurturing until the fruit of peace ripens and takes hold. That means when you have a conflict, this is not about solving it. This is not about stop that, be peaceful. This is about sowing those seeds and working with someone. Not being overcome by their weaknesses. Not being offended by them. Not being hurt. But being committed to see God's fruit of peace ripen in those that we love and care for. And staying with it until we see it happen. So this may be, as I said, a timeless process where it appears to be timeless, where we are just committed over and over again to peace. We are a quick fix culture. We want pills, we want activities, we want stuff, we want fun, we want change of pace and scenery, something to give us peace. What brings peace is people who are committed to peacemaking. Loving someone who is unlovely. Being committed to your wife, your son, your daughter, your friend, your husband. And working through that, showing them the commitment that Christ is showing to you. It means ple using pleasant words, not angry words. It means understanding someone so that they know that you hear them. So that you know you're just not giving them a command, not giving them some kind of a formula, and then you walk away. If you're going to be a peacemaker, you and I have to be involved in the process. We have to be a part of this planting, nurturing, cultivating, weeding, watering, and protecting until the fruit ripens. Peacemaking. It's a beautiful thing but we need the work of the Spirit within us to do it. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called sons of God because they're doing the work of God. Again, love your thoughts, your feedback. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your encouragement. And uh, I pray that this night, the Spirit of Peace will produce the fruit of peace in all of us. Thank you for being here. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you soon. I <laughs> just, love, just love this guy. See you, bye-bye.